He was one of the key players in the INX media operation. He's been completely silent so far, but no one understands the ins and outs, the financial structure and the editorial structure of INX media as well as Veer Sangvi. Welcome to Hello. the newsroom, Veer. Thank you. Uh, this is Veer Sangvi's first and only television interview. Veer was Chief Executive Officer and Editor-in-Chief of Peter and Indrani Mukherjee's media venture, INX Media. And everyone is waiting to hear what you have okay. to say. So welcome, Veer. Let's start at the very beginning. Okay. You had one of the top editorial jobs in the country. You decided to come on board at INX Media to help set up Peter and Indrani's media venture. Yeah. When did you first meet them? Why did you take this decision? Okay. Before I start out, can I sort of give a slightly boring but necessary preface? You said I haven't given any interviews and there's a reason for that. Almost from the time the Indrani news was flashed, my phone hasn't stopped ringing. But I am not exactly an objective party over here. I parted on very bitter terms with the Mukherjee's. I resent what they did. So please bear that in mind, whatever I say. I am not pretending to be neutral. Also, I think there is an element of schadenfreude, which is when you see that people you don't like are down, you don't want to glory, glory in their humiliation. So that's why I've been very reluctant to speak and, out. And that's appreciated. Because you've taken your time, you've gathered your thoughts, yeah. and now you're ready to speak. So tell our viewers, when did you first meet Indrani and Peter Mukherjee in connection with this business venture? Why did you decide to take it up? All right. I, I've known Peter Mukherjee for a while because Peter Mukherjee was chief executive of Star and I had a show on Star and it was those Star News at that stage was being done for them by NDTV. Mine was I think the only show on the channel that was not produced by NDTV but was produced by Star. So I had pretty extensive dealings with Peter and with Samir Nair who was head of content but that was only in a sort of vaguely professional sort of way. Occasionally if Peter came to Delhi we'd have lunch or whatever. Peter gets married, I think, around 2002. His wife is a little more outgoing. And then Peter, instead of asking people who were working for Star for lunch, started asking us for dinner. So I must have met her twice or thrice. What were your initial impressions of Indrani Mukherjee? Well, I think Suhail said, has said on your channel and on every other channel that she's actually quite attractive, charming, pleasant. And you don't think very much more of her than that. She seemed like a nice enough person and Peter was completely besotted with her. They were the kind of couple who couldn't keep their arms off each other. Okay. And then uh, you came on board, INX Media as CEO and Editor-in-Chief. What were the initial days like? Well, I was first of all very, not very wild about coming on board. I had been at the HT, I had been editor from 1999 to 2003. I had been editorial director, we're now talking about two. 2007, editorial director from 2003 to 2007, which launched a very successful Bombay edition. So I was quite happy over there. There had been two editors since I had given up the editorship. I continued as editorial director. But what they said to me was in a sense interesting. This is the time when CNN and IBN had been launched, Times Now had been launched. They said, famous last words, newspapers are dying, television is the future, you're one of the few journalists who can do both why don't you head a television channel, etc, etc. And it was a vaguely seductive prospect because I'd spoken to the HT and they said I could keep writing, I could keep my columns and they would keep me on as advisory editorial director so I would not really break my links with them either. Then Peter made me talk to Indrani and explain the idea. It transpired and here I'm going by what Indrani had said that Peter had been humiliated at Star, he'd been completely sidelined and Samir Nair, who was his great rival in this corporate war, was on the ascendant. Indrani, according to her, because she saw that Peter was so unhappy, spoke to Uday Kotak. And Uday Kotak put together this huge consortium of funding from all over. We had Temasek, New Vernon, New Silk Route, Kotak himself. So it seemed completely above what Cyril Shroff was the lawyer. It seemed like a great enterprise. There was good salaries for everybody and there was talk of stock options. As far as they were concerned, and I think I took time to realize this, the main operation was 9X, which was a big global entertainment channel, general, GEC. They were going to run other entertainment channels in various languages. The news channel, NewsX as we called it, was a sideshow. 
they didn't really care very much. But I mean, I was okay. I had no interest in being part of a general interest channel. As long as they left me on, on my own, I'd be quite happy to produce a news channel. So they said they would. And I went out and we hired lots and lots of people, some of whom actually ended up over here eventually. Very, very good journalists. And I went and hired Nick Pollard, who just stopped, stepped down as head of Sky TV and was probably the most respected person in British broadcasting. So it seemed everything was all systems go and then the problems began. Why did the problem start? What was the first sign that something was amiss? Well, the first sign that something was amiss was when Peter announced that Indrani, he'd first told us that Indrani would be chairman of the venture and I said, why? And he said, well, Indrani, you know, has an Indian passport and I couldn't understand why this was significant. Well, of course, he has an Indian passport. It transpired that Peter Mukherjee has a British passport. And with a British passport, you cannot head a news channel. So he said, you know, she'll just be there, but effectively you'll continue dealing with me. Then he appointed Indrani head of programming for 9X, which was a budget of a crore a day. So I said, now that she's doing that and she's deciding, oh, do you still want her here? And he said, yes. And as time went on, though I was given the designation of chief executive and editor in chief, Indrani signed every single check. Every single payment went through them. And people on my team, those, I'm not a technical person, I couldn't tell you how much that camera cost, kept saying to me, they're inflating the figures, there are problems. And I, mean, I didn't know, but I was beginning to get a little nervous. Then Indrani started insisting on attending editorial meetings, so we said no. Then she said no. Oh, she didn't attend. Oh, damned if I was going to let her attend. Then she said, let's have just meetings with editorial staff, at which there would be this, Indrani is a bit of a fantasist, but she talks a lot and there was a stream of consciousness stuff at one memorable meeting she said to us you know when peter worked for murdoch there was a thing in pebble beach in california where all of murdoch's chief executives came and peter and i were there and bill clinton was in the audience and clinton got up and he said you know when i was president of the united states the only man i feared was rupert murdoch okay so where is the setting that is what I want to be, she said. I want people to fear me. So, all kinds of... So, she had these notions of oh, being this big huge, media delu baroness. Huge delusions of grandeur. She was very obsessed with being this great media baroness. As far as Peter was concerned, as I was later to discover, 9X was a sideshow. He was, News X was a sideshow. 9X was what he was really interested in. The big money-making, money-spending channel. I suspect now in retrospect, it's easy to be wise in hindsight, the idea was that if he walked into, say, a ministry or somewhere and he said, hello, my name is Peter Mukherjee, I make soap operas, they'd make him wait. If he walked in and said, my name is Peter Mukherjee, I run a news channel, he'd get it immediately. So I think that's all we were for him, really, a necessary convenience. A necessary convenience, yes. you're saying. What was Indrani Mukherjee as a person to work with? You're saying she, she virtually became the super boss, even though you were CEO yeah. at uh, NewsX. What kind of uh, super boss was she? Well, she was a strange person in many ways. There's been this attempt in the media, and I've been watching television channels to suggest that Peter Mukherjee was this wonderful chap who went to Doon School, and Indrani Mukherjee was this pushy girl who came from a small town and took our wonderful Peter away. I never actually saw it like that. Yes, she was ambitious, but Peter was more ambitious. I always saw them as a team. They worked to a script of their own. We used to call them in that various not necessarily printable things but later when problems occurred at 9x the whole industry used to call them bunty and bubbly now i suppose people see them as bonnie and clyde but i saw them very much as the bill and hillary and that both were a professional partnership they knew what they were doing there wasn't a single thing that indrani did that Peter didn't know about. So you're suggesting that if there was any financial bungling at NewsX, and I'll come to that later, or at INX Media, it's not just Indrani Mukherjee who no. would have known about it, Peter would have had his hand in the till. I, I'm not going as far as saying that Peter had his hand in any till without any evidence, but I will say that this image that's been conveyed is wrong. They were one. They were not two separate people. I mean, Peter is an interesting guy. If you see Peter normally, he strikes you as being the sort of chap you'd meet in the club after a round of golf and he'd have two beers and he would chat. And that's the Peter we've seen on television over the last few days. But there's another Peter. That Peter's a very shrewd guy, a very smart businessman, a man who fought corporate wars at 
Star TV, knifed his boss, Ratikan Basu, became the top boss, had a huge knife war, which he lost eventually, with Samir Nair. He is not quite the amiable chap he pretends to be, and why should he be? He couldn't have made so many billions and run all these huge empires unless he was a really canny and shrewd businessman. What was your personal equation with Indrani Mukherjee like? In private conversation, what did she tell you about her backstory? Well, again, that's interesting because people who've worked at relatively senior levels in NewsX will tell you that she was a bit of a fantasist. And now, the more I discover about her, I'm sort of beginning to doubt almost everything she said. But for what it's worth, this is what she told us. She told us she came from a prosperous Assamese family in Guwahati. She told us that her family had plantations, land, etc. She also said, and I'm not betraying any confidences because she said this to large groups of people. She said when she was quite young, her father walked out of the house and was never seen again. Her mother then, so sort of shades of Hamlet, went on to marry the father's brother. She says she never got on with her stepfather, that her stepfather molested her, that at quite a young age she therefore walked out of home because her mother would not take her side. She went off to Calcutta, was very young, met this guy, this Khanna person who's Sanjeev now much Khanna. in the, that's right, met, met him, married him, had Vidhi, was very unhappy with him, left him even though, according to what she told us, her mother-in-law took her side against her own son, came to Bombay with virtually nothing with Vidhi, tried to make a living, was taken to a party by Alec and Sharon, where she met Suhail Seth and Peter Mukherjee, and you know the rest of the story. Now, how much of this is true, I don't know. There was no mention of any other brother, any other husband. Well, one of anything. the most important things you just said was, that Indrani Mukherjee told a group of people that she'd been molested by yeah. her father, stepfather. By, by her, her stepfather. By her stepfather. Now, whether stepfather whether there's actually a, a stepfather, I have no idea. But this was Indrani's story. Because sources in the Mumbai police are telling reporters who are covering this case now uh, that Indrani Mukherjee, during the interrogation, broke down to say uh, that her father, she's not saying stepfather, but that her father raped her and that Sheena could have been, uh, w was the child from that rape and therefore she was both the sister and the daughter. Well, I mean, this could be true, but having heard so many stories about Indrani, who has, I think, a tenuous grip of reality, she could just have watched the DVD of Chinatown the night before. So I'm not sure how much important But you're saying, is. long before this controversy broke, that when you all were talking to Indrani Mukherjee, she said... The that being molested by the stepfather was always part of the story. Was always part of yeah. her backstory. Yeah. Was Sheena too part of this backstory? No. The version was that because she left home and because she went to Calcutta, she lost touch with her parents and therefore with her stepbrother and her stepsister. That once she was settled down in Calcutta, she decided to try and rediscover her family and to let bygones be bygones as far as her stepfather was concerned. She got in touch with Mikhail, who, was, who she said was named after Gorbachev, and with Sheena. And she thought Sheena was wasting herself in Guwahati, so she brought her to Bombay and got her into college. And Sheena, who I did not know very well, was very present. The Mukherjee's would bring her to every function. She got along really well with Vidhi. She got along really well with Peter. She was a sweet child. Nobody had very much to say to her. But she was very much part of the scene. But she was introduced as Indrani's sister. And stepsister. Stepsister. Yeah. And that's the way it was. Yeah. Not even real sister as step a stepsister. Step -sister. From the same stepfather. From the same stepfather step who as the stepsister. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was the story, I mean. I have no way of knowing how much of this is fantasy, how much of this is true, but then that's true of nearly everything Indrani says. We've been speaking to a whole bunch of people who are part of the INX media operation. They say that money was virtually flowing like water. They say that money was wasted. There was profligacy. Is that the sense that you got as well by being there? No, I have to say it was no more profligate than, say, Star TV. I don't think money was wasted. I think that's an exaggeration. To, the, to be fair to Peter, who used to travel first class when he was at Star, he stopped traveling first class. They looked for cheaper hotels to stay in when they traveled abroad. I don't think that much money was wasted on the operation. Whether money was siphoned out or not, I have no way of knowing because we were a small sideshow at NewsX. The real money, the hundreds of crores, were at 9X. 
And yes, I mean, Ravina Raj Kohli on your show has made these points. There were lots and lots of rumors about money being siphoned off. No, so what did you hear? Tell us about that. Because Ravina Raj Kohli on the newsroom yesterday said that uh, everyone in Mumbai knew, the producers were constantly telling her that of the money that 9X was commissioning to producers, some part of it was coming back and that money was then put into shell companies, some of which could possibly have been in Sheena's name and this is something that investigators are collab uh, corroborating as well. They're saying that one of the key links that they're investigating is whether money was taken off, money given by the investors, was it sent into the Mukherjee's private enterprises? Well, look, I've heard the same stories as you have. I've heard the same rumors, but if this happened, it generally happened not with NewsX funds. It would have happened with 9X funds. And given that I, have, I didn't see the Mukherjee's for the last year, because I was not talking to them of 9X before they stepped. I have no way of knowing, but certainly I do not think it's an entirely implausible scenario. You don't think it's implausible? Entirely You spoke implausible. of the first signs of trouble. Yeah. From the first signs, things went downhill very quickly. Yes. Tell us what happened. Well, it just got worse and worse because we were getting readier and readier to launch the channel. Peter was showing no enthusiasm for launching the channel. Why not? By now he had launched 9X and it was probably the biggest disaster in the history of Indian broadcasting. It was doing really badly, but they were lying. They were claiming it was historic. They were taking the GRPs of 9XM, which was the music channel, adding them to the GRPs of 9X, sending investors false reports. And I mean, to their shame, the investors believed them, saying that the channel is doing all right. But they knew in their hearts of hearts that they were in trouble when it came to the ratings. I don't know what happened, but he got less and less enthusiastic about NewsX, didn't pay much attention to us. And then finally, I think it all came to a head around the end of December, we had a meeting in the basement of NewsX at which Peter, Indrani, various senior executives were. And we had a relatively tiny budget for distribution, which as you will know is the key in this business. And he said, I am taking away your entire distribution budget. And I said, why would you do that? And he said, oh, we need it for 9X because NewsX is not really that important. And I said, how will we be distributed? He said, you're an elite channel. Why don't you just go on Sky or somewhere? Why do you need to be on cable networks? Peter Mukherjee said this. Yes, in the presence of witnesses, Avi Ruksan and various people were present for this meeting because they were the senior management. So I, I'm not particularly proud of it, but I blew a gasket. I said, this is just a huge con job. You've misled us, you've told us. Right? They said nothing. Husband and wife went back to Bombay. The following Monday, leaks started appearing in television websites and the Mukherjee's were very, very clever. They kept advertising in industry publications and websites, so they kept Ravi quite sweet. They had a PR man whose job was basically to promote Indrani as the greatest media person in the world. They started all kinds of leaks saying I'd been sacked. Now the Mukherjee's did not have the authority to sack me because it had to go back to the investors. So where were these stories coming from? I was sitting in office, here were my employees, we were preparing for the launch and they were saying to me, but are you going to be here? Are you not going to be here? And I said, I think, I remember, I still remember, we were in the middle of planning how the launch would be and I got a call from a woman from Business Standard, I think it was, saying, so how do you, what do you want to comment on? So I said, on what? She so said, on your exit. So what exit? I'm sitting here. She said, oh, I was told you'd left. So I said, no, you can come and see for yourself. She said, oh, I was told you'd been sacked. So I said, it's the first I've heard of it. But there was this study pattern of leaks that the Mukherjee's orchestrated across media. I, television media, so marginal media, not main media, because main media would have double checked. I then called Peter, he wouldn't take my calls. I called Indrani, who said in a sort of very, I have no idea, really, how could this happen, etc. And then this, they left us basically, the, the Bombay, which is where the headquarters were, had no contact with us in Delhi for about two weeks. They left us twisting slowly, slowly in the wind. I called various investors, I called Temasek, etc. They said, we don't know. They called Peter. They put pressure on Peter. And then finally they came to Delhi and there was this meeting at their grand luxury suite at the Oberoi, where husband and wife said to me, look, this isn't working. We should part. And I said, yeah, I'm not particularly keen to hang around here either. But the problem was that the contracts Peter and Indrani had written for themselves, and I'd got one of the same contracts, had no exit clause. So if the investors had wanted to sack Peter, they'd have had to pay him for the full three years, which fortunately or unfortunately, even though I'd been there nine months, applied to me also. 
So he said, well, we'll work out a deal. So I said, look, this is all very unpleasant. I don't want to have anything more to do with you. There's a lawyer who drew it up. Let him deal with your lawyer. So the lawyers then dealt with it over two weeks or so. A settlement, which is, I have to say, nowhere near the settlement as contractually entitled, but not a bad settlement, was agreed to. It seemed to me to be amicable. I thought we could get on with the channel. I met Indrani after we'd signed the final letters, and I said, I'm sorry, this is it. But just one last thing, I need to send a note out to my staff just to say what's happened, to wish them luck and to say, don't worry, nobody's indispensable, the channel will go on to greater heights. And she said, sure, and she read it. And she said, how will you send this? I said, I'll mail it when I get home. In those days, we didn't all have iPhones. So she said, okay, it's very moving, goodbye. So I think I left the Oberoi, and I think by the time my car had reached Marine Drive, she had not only suspended my email account, but they had arranged with the server that any mails I sent from any of my other email accounts were repaired. Both husband and wife arrived two days later in Delhi, summoned the senior staff, forced them to sign letters of resignation. Various people refused. They were physically escorted from the premises. I think over the next three weeks, about a hundred people left, and they were left with no channel. But the Mukherjee's had their own story which they revealed to journalists who were present there, right. and they leveled a whole bunch of allegations against you. Such that as? you were blowing up money, that you, you'd gone abroad, there were champagne yes. baths. Yes, you would have fact, heard all of these stories. Yeah, of but course. they were never actually made on the record because these allegations were not sustainable. So what they did then, for fear that there would be trouble, is they spread a whole series of lurid rumors about me. The most ridiculous was that I had been to Paris at news, news X expense. I'd never been to Paris during that period. You'd I'd, never gone at all? Uh, never, never. Did. I'd been to Paris for like three years before that. I'd gone at News X expense. I had taken a luxury suite at the George Sank, I think it was. And I had ordered a case of champagne or a couple of cases of champagne and I'd filled the bathtub with champagne. Now, why would anybody want a cold bath with champagne? It seemed to be a particularly absurd story, but it had the element of absurdity that is required for stories to take on a life of their own. And these came from people like Indrani who said, you know, I know, I have seen the bills, etc. Et so they took on a certain credibility. And if they hadn't been exposed, the sort of humbugs they were, I think they would have so done you're denying it. that story completely because this story was... It's not no, even worth denying. It's because absurd. this is a story that was tom tom again and again. Yeah, and but in I'd, fact, love, in I'd one, love to see any proof for any of these stories. In fact, in one of the edit meetings where a journalist who now works with the India Today group was present, Indrani Mukherjee apparently came in and she said that, uh, tell me all the dirt that you have yeah. on Veer Sangvi. Whatever you've got on him, put it out. So it got really vicious after you left. It, they did everything possible they could to discredit me. It didn't work, I think, because nearly everybody walked out of India today. Uh, so what am I saying? Walked out to India today, to your group. A lot of people joined you. A lot of people went to other groups. They were unable to hire anybody of any consequence. They offered jobs to everybody in television. I think Karan Thapad, who was at Doon School with Peter Mukherjee in the same class, took on a consultancy and they were able to tom tom this to the investors as saying we've got a big name but even he refused to appear on camera despite the large sums they paid him so nothing happened it didn't work and as the channel sort of plummeted lower and lower with essentially second rate stuff the investors forced them to sell the channel not just the investors forced them to settle the channel the investors also ordered a probe uh, they said that the funds must be audited have that's for 9x not for news yes. yes have the funds been spent properly and I want to know what you know about this because that comes back now to what we have at hand. Yes, there is uh, investment. The murder because some of that money was apparently siphoned off. That's the charge. What do you know about it? Various investors came to me and said, do you know anything about this? And I said, no, but there are obvious places to look. If you run an entertainment channel with the largest budget, programming budget of any entertainment channel in Indian history and you appoint as the head of programming your wife, who has never been in television. I mean, red flag should have gone up with the investors even before it got to this stage. So by then, I was, to be very honest, fairly fed up with the investors because I'd been telling them what was going on. And yet, they were completely seduced. They, of course, fell out with Peter and Indrani and believed what was going on. But that wasn't all. Many of the employees of NewsX who were sacked went to see Priyoranjan Das Munshi, who was then the INB minister. minister. And they raised questions about the funding and financial irregularities. Priyo called me 
and said, you know, it's very bad. So I said, look, I have my huge problems with the Mukherjee's, but I don't think the government should get involved in the affairs of a news channel. He said, no, there are financial irregularities. And I said, that's not your job. So he sent this, and I, I know this for a fact, he sent a note to Chidambaram asking the finance ministry to open an inquiry into the Mukherjee's and what they were doing at NewsX. I subsequently spoke to Chidambaram, who then asked me if I had any information. And I said I didn't have that much information. I could only suspect that something was amiss, but I thought, and at this stage the Mukherjee's were firmly in control of 9X, that the story worth looking at was 9X. As we know, nobody looked at 9X. 9X went bust, in owing, I think, Ikta Kapoor, Anuradha Shukla, various people, crores and crores of rupees. And the Mukherjee's exited, saying that, you know, economic downturn didn't work. So while people were left holding this failed channel and being owed crores of rupees, they went off to the flesh pots of the world where they then were for the next five, six years, going from one luxury holiday to another.